Welcome back, everybody. Um, thank you for your patience there. Um, it's a slight uh, technical glitch, but um, I'm delighted to say that we have um, Lord Holmes of Richmond with us um, to uh, present the, the closing session of uh, the Scientific International Scientific Conference, Blockchain International Scientific Conference 2022. Um, Lord Holmes has also been made a fellow of the BBA, so congratulations, Lord, Lord Holmes, and welcome. Excellent. Delighted to have you with us. Um, so just a little, uh, Pracy, on yourself. Um, I understand you're a, a passionate advocate for the potential of technology and the, the, the benefits of diversity and inclusion, um, and that you sit on the uh, Science and Technology Select Committee. Um, I also understand that um, you've been a member of Specialist House of Lords Select Committees that include democracy and digital technologies, artificial intelligence, digital skills, um, and financial exclusion. So plenty there for us all to talk about um and perhaps um right now uh, uh lord holmes has been the co-chair of the all-party parliamentary groups on assistive technology fintech ai the fourth industrial revolution and of course blockchain so over to you lord holmes thank you very much for joining us thank you very much indeed good evening to everybody and firstly can i apologize sincerely for keeping you all uh waiting uh regrettably the air meat platform doesn't uh, seem to be accessible to my uh, screen reading software so it's a good example of while we make many advances in new technologies if we don't have inclusion as part of them then we have problems in terms of what we can all achieve and how we can all participate so something for me to pick up with air meat post this but don't let me dwell on that but it does emphasize the point of why so much of my work in parliament is trying to link together those two strands of inclusion and innovation and talent and technology and how they interplay and how if we can get that combination right stunning things can be achieved when everybody is enabled to participate and bring of their uh, innovation First things first, though, may I say a huge and heartfelt thank you to the BBA for bestowing a fellowship upon me. I'm humbled. I'm delighted. It means a great deal to me. And I'd just like to thank everybody who is involved with the BBA and who is involved in making uh, that decision. And may I say congratulations to everybody for today's conference. Having looked through the programme, I very much look forward to catching up with all of the presentations, covering such a great deal of ground in such detailed way with such stunning speakers. It really shows the strength of the BBA and also the strength of blockchain itself that we can now say no longer do we have to think of it as an emerging or emergent technology, something for the future, as everybody on this call has been aware for a while. It's very much something for now, and we need it more than ever as every day of this complex, confusing, uncertain, and in some ways horrifically unstable world unfold on a daily basis and I'm sure like everybody on this call all our thoughts are very much with the people of Ukraine and that absolutely horrific situation. In brief, why did I become interested in blockchain and distributed ledgers technology? It's pretty simple really. From the outset, over a decade ago, I saw the untapped potential. Potential, not inevitability. Even at that stage, I was no sense seeking to get involved and make a claim that this could be the silver bullet, or indeed necessarily even a silver bullet. But I saw that there was something here more than well worth experimenting with and getting involved with. And I also saw a clear and present danger 
which I think continues to this day, the sense of how blockchain and Bitcoin are still too inextricably linked in the media dialogue and in a lot of the public consciousness of the public who are conscious of these technologies. The problem there being that, as we all know, if we were unable to untangle, to uncouple that blockchain and all of its possibilities for public good, private good, economic, social and common good, all of that could be unrealized because it would all die on that bonfire of potential Bitcoin fluctuation, Bitcoin so-called instability. Though again, even if you look at Bitcoin and plot it over a reasonable period, you see that even that argument isn't as strong as people like to make. But that sense of it being a speculative currency killing the planet could and still potentially can kill off or at least damage, frustrate, slow down the progress that we all want to make with these technologies. And again, that's why I was so delighted to read through today's program because it showed both the breadth and the depth of use cases. Future technology, future technology now, stuff happening right now, making positive impact to people's lives. It's why I wrote my di distributed ledger technologies for public good report in 2017. So grateful to many people on this call and beyond who helped in the preparation of that report to really draw out potential use cases across the public sector. The example I always like to alight upon is that sense of currently 25,000 doctor days being taken up in doctors proving their credentials, their identity, their qualifications to work. Incredibly important. Nobody would want to go under the knife of somebody who wasn't fully qualified and experienced and had all of the practicing certificates to be able to operate as a surgeon. Incredibly important. But all of those days potentially could be done in fractions of moments with potential blockchain technologies. And then you'd still have that same level of confidence that your practitioner was able to perform that operation. But we as a society, just as the UK, would have realised 25,000 more doctor days for care, for operations, for follow-ups. No extra resource. No need for more money, simply utilising what currently exists by deploying a blockchain solution to that specific. That was just one specific in the report. As I said, in many ways, everybody on this call knows that the use cases are boundless and plentiful. I particularly enjoyed all the work which is happening around smart law. Uh, having been a lawyer many decades ago, I think the law is definitely ripe for these technologies. And I'm pleased to say that there's been a bit of a move from calling things smart contracts to smarter contracts. I hope that the work that I did when I was lawyering, that the contracts I was putting together were reasonably, uh, reasonably smart. I think it's a good move forward in language to talk about smarter contracts, but all, all the work which Sarah Green is involved with, and indeed the great interest of Jeffrey Vose as Master of the Roles, that offers such potential. And again, it really goes to the second part of the title I gave to my report in 2017. Yes, it was distributed ledger technologies for public good, but then there was a colon. The second part of it, at least as important as that public good part, leadership, collaboration, innovation. And it's those three things, I believe, which are still 
the key three that can deliver what we need. And I think what Sarah Green's doing with that uh, programme is absolutely extraordinary in such an important area. I know we've got a a Law Commission bill coming to Parliament later this year, which would be incredibly impactful in this area as well. In terms of another area of significant interest, and again, it's pertinent in the current geopolitical, in the current pandemic climate in which we find ourselves, the role that blockchain, DLT, can play with supply chain. I probably was slightly surprised. I'd had a lot of involvement when I was lawyering with uh, international trade. But when I really got close up to how modern supply chain, I use modern in single inverted commas, how modern supply chain works, the opacity, the lack of being able to really dig back very far along supply chain, and the reality that in so many ways, as with so many elements of our life, it's just so disappointingly papery. It's fabulous to get involved with the Chainvine project, basing the Australia-UK wine trade on a blockchain, having all the documentation, all of the customs, all of the finance, all of the stuff right from Vine, right through to the bottle, the first bottle arriving in the first consignment at HMRC to prove the concept from the ground in Australia to the desk at HMRC. A fabulous example of what blockchain can do in enabling, in empowering, in delivering that clarity, that security and that certainty through a pretty complex and certainly pretty long supply chain from Oceana right through to London. Finally, and to bring us right up to date, we have the election elections bill going through Parliament right now. And I have some amendments down looking to see how the government may, may wish to experiment with blockchain in the area of the electoral roll, for example. If we had an electoral roll, which was based on our distributed ledger technology, that could solve so many of the issues that have dogged that aspect of our democracy for decades. Similarly, if we look to combine that with potential electronic voting machines, so you still have quite rightly the tradition, the custom of going to the polls to vote in person, but doing it with an EVM tied to that blockchain enabled electoral role that could give such security such confidence in the process that there, there wouldn't need to be any sense of was that vote as declared the vote as cast? And obviously across the pond we've seen some recent examples of where that's been problematic in ways that none of us could have ever imagined when we think about what happened at the Capitol building last January, quite extraordinary. And it isn't too hyperbolous, I hope, to suggest that if there was a DLT, a blockchain-enabled uh, electoral role, potentially that wouldn't have happened because you'd have had that certainty and that cast iron digital bedrock for which the vote could be based. It's fabulous to talk about blockchain. I think it's always important to see all of these new technologies in terms of how they can interact with one another how they can operate in concert to truly transform so many elements of our life, the public space, our public places, our state, our society, our economy, public good, public growth, social growth, economic growth, real potential, no need for rose tinted spectacles, no need to be Panglossian, but certainly a great case to be rationally optimistic and for all of us, as I know everyone on this call does, to push to enable more and more use cases, proofs of concept and standing up these technologies to enable us to have the society that we always could have, I hope that we all wanted, to transform the relationship 
between citizen and state a new digitally enabled social contract for the benefit of us all. Tremendous speech today. Thank you to BBA again for bestowing such an honour upon me. I'm humbled. I'm so delighted. I look forward to working with you going forward. And maybe as things change, we will all meet again in person very soon. Thank you very much indeed again. Thank you very much, Lord Holmes. Uh, rousing speech there. Um, I, th I think the idea of a, a new digitised social contract <clears throat> and being rationally optimistic about it is, is, is genuinely fantastic. Um, so um, that is the end of um, this year's uh, Blockchain International Scientific uh, conference again thank you very much lord holmes for, for for joining us and apologies for the for the technical glitch um yeah it's been absolutely incredible i i've 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 listened to every single um every single session that we've had uh listened to every single paper presented so thank you very much to our our researchers um and to the speakers and uh nasim i'm sure you have some final words to to to, to conclude yes thank you very much uh, lord holmes for an excellent uh, closing keynote I would like to thank all our um, speakers, delegates, sponsors, researchers for making this conference uh, a huge success. And I would uh, like to thank Brian, Brian Scudder, our Deputy Secretary, for, um, for hosting today's conference. Thank you, Brian, for all your help. Uh, a tremendous job, fantastic, well done. Uh, and also to my colleague, Dr. Hussain, everybody at the BBA, at the JBBA, our editorial board, our peer review board for reviewing the uh, the blockchain research abstracts, and uh, and thank you to the blockchain community for uh, for your support of the association, and uh, we will see you hopefully in person uh, uh, next year. Thank you very much, uh, and we conclude our conference. Thank you. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. I'll end.